Hey Music Maker, hope you're having a great day. On today's quick production tip, I wanted to go over my top five ways to make drum samples sound realistic. So let's jump into Logic and I'll show you exactly how I do this and how you can start doing this in your productions today. So now that we're here in Logic, I wanna go over my top five ways to make drum samples sound realistic. Now, a lot of us are producing from home. We may not have an access to a drummer. So the next best thing is using these incredible sounding drum samples, but using the drum sample as they come sometimes isn't enough. There's definitely ways to make them sound even more humanistic and real. That's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. So the first thing is through velocity. So as you know, in Logic, you can control the velocity of any note, any hit, any MIDI region, and any DAW can do that. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about in this one section here, because this is a build in sort of an epic cinematic type song. And having builds can be one of the hardest things to make sound realistic. So let me play this back for you to kind of see where it ended up and then we'll kind of reverse engineer and how we got there. Okay, so it sounds organic and real and played to me. So how did we accomplish this? Well, a few different ways. Let me solo the drums here. So as you can see, the velocity regions are much different. It starts off soft and then it eventually grows and the redder it gets, the harder the hit is and it builds in. So how do we do that? Well, simply select a region or a group of regions. In a build like this, I would select a group of regions and then I would go over here to my velocity down here at the bottom and I would just kind of go through. And this of course can be tedious, but also keep in mind too, if you're using a MIDI controller, as you play it in, you're gonna be using some velocity in, in as far as your dynamics go too. So using velocities as you're actually playing the notes in, but then going back and just kind of making sure everything is gradually building really makes a big difference to the end result in sounding realistic. So the second thing we do is through quantization. Now, for a long time, I would just take my section of parts, highlight them all, and then I go up here and hit quantize 100% which is fine and great. However, if we're going for a more realistic human feel, we actually don't want to quantize 100%. So what I like to do is drag this back to maybe 90%. Now it all depends on the instrument. It all depends on the, the performance. However, if we just bring this back, I'll show you the difference here. So 90, 100%. So it's perfect, but if you notice, we got a bit of that kind of machine gun vibe happening. So if I just pull it back just a little bit, 87, let's try that. So if you notice, there's not that perfect sound, which is ironically what we want. A lot of times in recording, we feel like we need to get the perfect take, but honestly, the more and more I listen to songs that I love, there are so many imperfections in music and that's what kind of makes it human because we're human, we're not perfect. So if that's reflected in our sounds, in our songs, even if we're programming, still trying to stray away from the absolutely perfected, everything's on the grid, that's gonna make it sound much more human in the long run. So the third tip here is I actually like to use room samples with my regular drum samples. So. I use a lot of drum samples from that sound. And if you haven't heard of them, go check them out. I want that sound.com tons of amazing drum samples. 95% of all the drum samples I use are from that sound. So one thing that's cool with a lot of their packs is when you select a drum, say this, this floor tom hit, but then also I will grab the additional floor tom rooms room only sample. So that way it gives a completely different perspective but it makes a huge difference when it comes to playback. So I'm gonna play it with or without the room sound on there and you'll kind of see the difference. So as you can hear, it sounds totally fine, but when we add these rooms back in, It just adds an extra layer of realism, which obviously these samples were played by real human beings in a room. So if we pull out the room sound, we're kind of robbing the overall tone of what it would sound like if you're standing in a room listening to the drum kit, because that's what we're doing when we're producing a song primarily is we're trying to give the listener the feel like they are in the room with the band. In this case, this is a band type song. So if we add those room samples on top of the regular samples, it can definitely help 
tie in that realistic sound. Now the fourth way I like to make drum samples sound realistic is by using reverb sends. So here's the drums without any reverb sends on them. Soloed. So of course sounds fine, sounds great. And there is some reverb on some of those drums. However, when we add just a little bit, we're talking about, I've got minus 18 here. This is a kind of a wider sounding song. When we add this in, it really helps bring it to life. You can hear the reflections in the room. So that makes a huge difference. So just adding a little bit of reverb to the overall drum send, the bus can make a massive difference between realistic and non-realistic sounding drums. And number five, the way I love to make sample drums sound realistic is with a little bit of saturation. So in my case, I'm using Decapitator, but there's a ton of great saturation plugins in Logic and any DAW that you're in. So let me play this back without any saturation on it. Again, sounds fine. However, when we add a saturation plugin like Decapitator, and I'm not using a ton here, I'm just gonna add a little bit just to add some warmth and it makes it feel more organic and more natural because if you're in a room and you're listening to drums or a PA, if the drummer is playing harder, it's going to start to almost overwhelm the drivers and the speakers and kind of give that not distorted, but that very organic kind of driven sound. So we'll kind of play around with the knobs here, but like you can see, I, I really don't have it set really high. And I also have a mix knob here in Decapitator is, is pulled back a lot. So let me show you with kind of too much on it. Obviously that's way too much. We don't want it to feel like it's overdriving, but as I dial this knob back, kind of listen to how it sits in the pocket. See, it swells, there's dynamic, there's a real feel to it. It has such a human feel just by adding a little bit of drive. Play around with that with whatever kind of distortion or overdrive plugin that you like to use. Or if you have Decapitator, this is a great one. It's a sound toys thing. It goes on sale all the time and it's a really versatile plugin. I use it on vocals and, and everything really, but drums especially, I always have it on my drum bus just to make it kind of, like I said, it, I feel like it really brings those samples to life. So there you have it, my top five ways to make drum samples sound more realistic. It comes through velocity, it comes through quantization that comes through using room drum samples on top of your regular drum samples that comes through reverb sends and that comes through some sort of saturation plugin so i hope that this helps if you have any other questions or videos you'd like to see me make for quick production tips leave it in the comment below don't forget to subscribe hit the bell icon and i will see you on the next video